What's up everyone, Danny Lightning back with another video. Today we are going to check out Streamlabs and OBS Studio. They're basically the same program, but we're going to show you how to set up your audio and get it sounding really good for recording or live streaming. I'm going to show you on OBS, but Streamlabs is so similar, you'll be able to use this one just fine. It's pretty much the same thing, just looks a little different. If I'm recording, I don't use the effects. I do that all later in the video editing software, but if I'm live streaming, I do add the VST effects to change the way things sound and make sure everything is great to give the user a much better listener experience. So first I'm gonna show you like how to get your gain on your microphone set correctly. Then we're gonna go into the VST effects. Then we'll show you more of the advanced audio settings after that. Let's go get to it. We're going to show you how to start adding the VST effects and get your microphone gain and all that stuff set correctly. So what you want to do is go into the settings. You're going to find the little thing that says audio and for mic aux, make sure you have the correct microphone selected. So once you do that, go ahead and hit OK. Next, turn up the gain on the microphone until you see the little bar down here. See where my mouse is on the right? See the little green bar moving? You do want to see that get into the yellow, but you don't really want to see it go much past minus 15. Now, that's where I recommend setting it. And if we're doing live streaming, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So the first thing we're going to do is add VST effects. We're going to go ahead and click the three dots. We're going to click filters. And the first thing we're going to do is hit the little plus on the bottom right, bottom left corner. And you're going to see all these things that show up. I'm using the Reaper plugins. I'm gonna put a link on where to get the Reaper plugins because they are superior to the ones that come with OBS or Streamlabs. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is add a noise gate. So on that drop down menu, you're gonna choose VST2 effect and then we're gonna choose the effect we want. Now, if you're just using the stock plugins, choose the stock noise gate instead of the VST effect. But I highly recommend clicking the link and going to get those Reaper plugins because they are so much better than the stock ones. So let's choose the VST effect we want and then we're going to rename it. Now if you're in a noisy room, this is a very important thing to have. So we, we, we've, now we have to select the noise gate. So I'm looking for Regate. So this is the Reaper noise gate. Reaper is an awesome company. They do offer a free plugin package that works on their audio editing software or on other audio editing software. So we're gonna choose Regate. We're gonna hit open. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be silent for a minute and we're gonna watch this little green bar down here. And you can see when I'm quiet, there's movement on the bar. That means there's audio being picked up from my microphone from the background noise of the room. So all we're going to do is take this little thing right here, this little bar, and we are going to move it up until we see no movement when I'm quiet. So let's do that right now. All right. So now when you talk, you need to make sure it's not cutting off the, the first part and the last part of your words. That's one problem with the noise gate. If you have it set up wrong, it will do that. So only use the no noise gate if 100% necessary. If you're not in a noisy room or something like that, don't really worry about it too much. Generally, I find I don't really need to mess with anything other than adjusting that big bar right there. So let's go ahead and add the next VST effect. All right, we are gonna hit the little plus button again. We're gonna hit VST effects. The next thing we're gonna add is a compressor. So we're going to rename that compressor. We're going to hit OK. We're going to find our drop down list of, v list of VST effects. Now there is a built in compressor, but I don't like it. I would much rather use this Reaper compressor. So we're going to find the Recomp plugin. And again, I'll put a link in the video's description of where you can download these Reaper compressors and EQs and all the good stuff. So there's Recomp. We're going to go ahead and click on that. We're going to hit Open Interface. So we don't really have to adjust much here either, which is really cool. We're gonna set the attack to three milliseconds, release to 100, and those are already set correctly. We're gonna set the uh, ratio to three to one. So you should see three to zero to one, or at least get it really close. Three to one to one is just fine as well. Now we're gonna grab this big bar. We're gonna pull the threshold bar down until we see just a little bit of movement on this red bar. So right now we're, we're getting like six decibels of compression when I'm talking and that's too much. So let's move that back up a little bit. We only wanna see that come down maybe two to three decibels, right? 
We want to see that just barely come down just a little bit when I'm talking. And now if I get really loud, that will squish the loud parts and the quiet parts down so they're more of the same volume. It won't blow out somebody's ears. So the compressor is basically just keeping all of our speaking voice to around the same volume, which you really want. Because if you get excited and you yell and it gets really loud, your microphone could distort. This will help prevent distortion and help give your listener a much better listening experience. So there we go. There is our compressor let's go ahead and add the next effect again we're going to hit the little plus button we're going to choose vst effect and we're going to choose eq we're going to rename this eq now streamlabs did just make its own eq it's only got a bass a treble and a mid setting so it's still kind of inferior to the raper one so i'm going to find the req r-e-e-q right where is req on the list there it is, Re-Q. Let's go ahead and hit Open Interface. First off, you're not going to hear any of the changes currently because I'm recording this video on a different screen recorder. I'll let you hear what it sounds like after all the changes in just a minute. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take band number one, and I'm going to set that to a high pass. And I'm going to set that to around 60 hertz. And that's going to cut off all of the unwanted bass. Like if there's a fan or an air conditioner, or if you say a p and it pops, that's going to get the bassy sounds that are deeper than the human voice out of the lesser subwoofer and get rid of any room rumbles or hums or anything. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another band over here. I'm going to add band just in case you need a couple more bands. You can add as many as you want. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the bands. The next thing we're going to do is add a high, high shelf. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add band. I'm going to set this band to high shelf. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this frequency to about 12,000. I'm going to boost that by about 6 decibels. Now on your microphone, you may not need to boost it at all. You may do 1 or 2 or 3 decibels. On my current microphone, I need to do about 6 decibels because this microphone is a very dark sounding microphone. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is add another band. And this one's going to be, we're going to cut the bass a little bit. I get some muddy bass frequencies right around 500 hertz. So I'm going to put this at 500 hertz. I'm going to do about minus 3. And again, you're not going to be able to hear the changes to this right now because I'm currently recording on a different screen recorder. In a minute, after we're all done, I'll change over to this screen recorder so you can see what my microphone sounds like after the changes. So I'm going to go ahead and mess with the bandwidth, get a nice little curve there. I'm going to go ahead and, head, head and add another band. And... I'm going to move that down to about 130, 150, and I'm just going to drop that down by about 2 decibels. So I'm going to put that down to like minus 2. Again, your microphone may need a different EQ setup, but this is about how I do my particular microphone. It's a very bassy, very dark microphone, and it does get some muddy sounds from my room. So there's my EQ setting. That's roughly how I set my EQ for my microphone. So let's move on to the next VST effect. All right, so the next thing we're gonna add is a limiter. And this is gonna make sure our microphone does not distort if we get a little bit too loud. So you can use a VST effect, but we're gonna go ahead and use the built-in limiter that comes with this instead. And I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm simply gonna move that to about minus one or minus two decibels, all right? And that way, if you get really loud and it goes to fly off the end and clip and distort, this turns it down before that can happen, or at least it tries to. As long as you got the microphone gain set correctly, this will save you from distorting or clipping when you get really loud. And that's pretty much it. Our limiter is now set. And there's one more thing we're going to add. When we're recording, we can always turn up the volume on the editing software. That gives you plenty of headroom to work with. But if you're live streaming, we're going to go ahead and add the, we're going to hit the plus button again and add gain. We're going to hit OK. And now you're going to notice when I turn this gain up, that little bar is going to move up into the red. So when you're live streaming, you want to see that bar hit into the red, but you never want to see it go off of the end. And if everything is set correctly, if you do get loud, the compressor and the limiter will turn that down enough to where it doesn't distort. So what you're going to want to do at this point is start yelling. Just be like, hey! Hey, it's four in the morning. There's people sleeping in the house, so I'm not going to scream right now, but get really loud and try to make so it doesn't quite kick in the limiter, but 
gets close to it. Just but just play with that gain until you get it just to the right volume. Do some recordings, yell into the mic, make sure it doesn't distort. If it does distort, turn that gain back down just a little bit. So that's basically all there is to it for the basics and adding the VSTs. Now we're going to get into some of the more advanced settings on the uh, streaming software to make sure your audio settings are set properly. Oh, and by the way, if you want to turn these on and off, you just click the little eyeball. Look, that turns it off. That turns it on. So if it's lit up, it's on. If it's got the little, you know, the little X on there, it is turned off. All right, let's go ahead and move on. So find your little thing that says settings. I moved my little things around here. So yours may be in a different place, but find settings. Click on output. So you've got advanced. I always set mine to advanced mode. For streaming, I always use one audio track. So next, we're going to go over to the recording tab. Now, you can add one or two or three or four or five or six audio tracks. I choose to use two audio tracks. Audio track one is going to be my voice. Audio track two is going to be any sounds that play over my PC. That when I, way, when I go over to the editing software, I can adjust the volume separately. Now, when you're live streaming, it's all going to be one audio track. You're not going to have several audio tracks when live streaming, so make sure you get your game volume or your PC sounds adjusted properly before the stream starts. That way the music or the game sounds not overpowering your voice or whatever. But on the recording tab, okay, I always use two tracks. And all this other stuff, you know, this is for a different video. We're just going through the, like, audio right now. Now we're going to click on the audio tab. So the audio bit rate, you've got up to 192, up to 320. Now, if you're doing a YouTube video, like 160 or 192 is what YouTube uses. So you can set it to one of those if you're just simply doing YouTube. If you want the best quality possible, set all of those bit rates for each track up to 320. Normally, I'm just recording for YouTube, so I keep it on 160. But if I'm going to do something where I want a super high quality recording, I'm going to turn that up to 320 on every one of those tracks to get the absolute best audio, audio quality possible out of my recording. Now, over on the audio tab sample rate, you should probably be using 48 kilohertz. Check your microphone. Figure out how many kilohertz your microphone works at. You can do 44.1 or 48. I'm always going to go with 48 as long as my microphone is a 48 kilohertz. You can go with stereo. You can go with mono. I'm going to go with stereo. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is come down to where your little microphone bar is and click on these three dots. Click on Advanced Audio Properties. So the first thing is your audio interface or your microphone may or may not be stereo. Like that little green bar, you'll see there's two bars moving at the same time. If I click this, uh, where's the mono thing? Where's the mono thing? Desktop, the microphone. Now you're going to see only one bar is active right now and one bar is not being displayed. So if you see that happening, that's not a good thing. You want to find your microphone in here, click mono. This will change your mono into a left and right track. So you may want to make sure that if you only see one bar, then that's just 100% fine. You don't have to do anything. But if you see two bars and only one is moving, make sure you come in here and down mix that to mono. Also, under tracks, my microphone is set for track one. And desktop audio is everything that plays over top of the computer, all the game audio and this and that and everything else. And we have that set to track number two. That way they're recorded separately. Now, if you want them all recorded on one track you would of course click the track number one for everything right but i choose to go with desktop audio on track two my voice on track one if i am running a separate microphone i also record that on track one and i think that's really about all there is to it all right so this is how the microphone sounds after all the changes we got the compressor going we got the eq going I don't know if I've got the EQ set 100% right. I would actually have to play with it. I just kind of gave it a little bit of a rough idea of what I normally do on my audio editing software. Normally I do the, do the EQ and all that stuff on the audio editing software. So when I'm actually recording, I don't use any of these effects. When recording, I do it all afterwards. But if you need to do it while recording or while live streaming, that's how you set all that stuff up.
Now I'm going to let you hear exactly what it sounds like when I do the editing on my audio editing software instead of here. You may tell a difference because, because I have the EQ dialed in exactly how I want it, but right now you're hearing exactly what it sounds like when I'm running my Fab Filter compressor, my Fab Filter EQ, and a few other things on my audio editing software. If you take the time to dial it all in, you can get the same exact results, but the one problem is when you're recording, let's just say you do have something set incorrectly and it messes up. Well, you're gonna re re you, your recording will be ruined and you'll have to re-record it. So it is better to do all the editing afterwards if possible. Now, of course, when you're live streaming, you're stuck with, you know, using it during the live stream. You can't go back and edit that because it's live. So, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are amazing. There's some ways to help support the channel down there in the video's description and all that good stuff. And we will catch you next time, all right? Lighten it out. Hope the video helped. See you guys.